Okay, it's done. Okay, let's uh, we'll get started. Okay, why don't you all sit down? We'll let's pray. Okay. okay. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this for this day, Lord. We thank you for yet another opportunity that you've given us to come to your presence, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for yet another opportunity to know you. And Lord, we thank you that uh, you just want to reveal your heart to us, Lord. And Lord, we pray even as we get to know you today, Master, I pray that, uh, Lord, that you will write your word upon our hearts, Lord. Father God, that we will not be forgetful hearers of the word, but be diligent doers of the word. And Master, we pray, we come at this day, we come at this time into your mighty hands. We pray that you will, Lord, lead us, Lord, into uh, all that you have for us, Master. We thank you for the good things, for the good works, Lord, that you have planned for us, Lord. And so uh, we just want to give you praise. And uh, we commit ourselves into your mighty hands. We surrender our lives, Lord, to you, Father God. And we pray that you will mold us and shape us today, Lord. Uh, can we just ask the Lord, you know, to say... To, to just really mold us, right? to change things within us, to transform us and, uh, and remove things out of our lives, all the unhealthy things out of our lives and to refine our lives. Right? Let's ask the Lord to do that. Yes, Lord, we, we commit ourselves, Lord. We surrender our lives, Lord, into your mighty hands. Yes, Lord, move among us. Lord, move in us, Lord, individually, God, and... Uh, changes from the inside out. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So we've been studying about uh, the Holy Spirit. So last class, we, we looked at um, uh, certain things. Right? We started by looking at Trinity, right? Um, so what is Trinity? Anyone? What did we study about Trinity? Last class, yeah. Okay, one God and three persons. The Trinity is not three gods, right? So, so, so what, what are those three persons that we studied about? Father, Father Son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, yeah. Okay. And so, um, so in the Bible, we saw that Scripture just declares the triune God, right? Doesn't go on to uh, explain, you know, uh, about the triune God, but just declares the triune God, right? So, uh, what do you remember of the pictures that we saw of the Trinity? Trinity being described in the Bible, right? So, what do you remember? Where do you see those those pictures of Trinity? Uh, okay, uh, during the baptism. Chapter um, 1. Sorry. Yeah, got, um, got true. We see it in Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Mm. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the earth. Yes. yes, yes. We see the Father. We, we see the mention of uh, the Son, I mean, of the Spirit. And then in okay. Hebrews, we read the parallel that, uh, that everything was created, everything that was created was through the Son, right? So we. We see the picture there, right? Anyone else? Um, okay, we see um, Susan, uh, sorry, Lucy, Stephen looking up to heaven, yes, uh, at the martyrdom of Stephen. Okay, where else? Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9. Uh, sorry? Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9. Um, can you just read that out for us? Uh, yes, sir. Don't, don't, please. Yeah, yeah. And uh, w what was that uh, about in reference to? And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the age has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. Yeah, so God created everything through Jesus. So you see the reference to the Father and the Son here, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, so particularly, um, so we so we need to study this and also look at 
Genesis 1 and then and then Hebrews we see that the picture is complete we see the triune God being mentioned right now any other place birth of a Lord Jesus Christ brother yeah birth of the Lord so Jesus the Christ. angel comes and announces and then you know, there also we see the power of the highest will overshadow and the one that is born will be called the son of the highest and and so on right okay and then uh, we uh, we looked at uh, the the you know you know some of the description of the holy spirit we looked at the fact that he is god because he is eternal we saw that he is it he is god because he's omnipotent he's omnipresent he's omniscient all these attributes or characteristics are seen in the holy spirit right so we we studied that okay so we started by looking at the fact that the holy spirit is a person right the holy spirit is a person it has a personality it's not an object not a force not a thing right we saw that the holy spirit is a person and what qualifies us to be uh, what qualifies someone to be a person rather than a thing or an object why would you say, why would you not say that the chair is a person or a table is a person? Because Doesn't it's an motion? object. So, sorry, someone said, Pankaj. Because it's an object. It is an? Object. Yeah, it is an object. So why would the, an object not qualify to be a person? Okay, it's so I see the responses here. There are no emotions, no will, uh, because it cannot move. Okay, yeah. So all these are valid. Um, okay. So, so the thing is this: when we say the Holy Spirit is a person and not a force or not an inanimate object, we see that the Holy Spirit, you know, he has a will. He speaks, communicates. Uh, the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit being grieved, right? The instruction being, "Do not, do not grieve the Spirit of God." Right. So we, we looked at all that. Okay. So let's continue. And if you have your notes, you can you can look into your notes. Uh, online students, the, the notes are there in the classwork section. If you've not yet downloaded that, or you can you can just go there and just click on that and open it. Right. So okay. So we see that uh, we saw last class that he has a will. He has emotions. He can speak. Uh, we also saw that you know he can we can insult the Holy Spirit. We can blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Right, people did, uh, and we can resist the Holy Spirit. So, what does that mean? Resist the Holy Spirit, which means that you and I have free will, and the the Holy Spirit wants to do something, right, or ask us to do something. We can disobey and resist, right? Resist means saying no. You know, I will not do it. Okay, so we can resist the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to take us someplace, or Holy Spirit wants to do something in us. We can actually resist right so um, Acts chapter 7 you can turn there Acts chapter 7 and verse 51 okay Acts chapter 1 uh, 7 verse 51 um, Paul um, uh, sorry um, uh, we see that uh, Stephen is actually uh, reprimanding the people okay He's saying you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did so do you okay so what do they do they resisted the work of the holy spirit resisted means you know to block to come against to, to do things opposite of what the spirit wants us to do they resisted okay so we whether knowingly or unknowingly we can resist the holy spirit the holy spirit says do not go there do not do that and we can actually resist his instructions resist his voice okay. the Holy Spirit is God he's all powerful but at the same time God has given us free will what does that mean free will choice yeah freedom to choose freedom to decide freedom you can decide whether to obey you can decide whether to disobey right so he has not made us as machines. You know, the machine, when you, if, you, if you have to you know, run the fan, you switch on, 
it doesn't say today i don't feel like running right it just runs it just moves right because that's what it's it's been uh, it's been manufactured in such a way that when there's electricity passing through it will move right so god has not made us to be machines he has given us the ability to decide choose or not choose so in our maybe in our ignorance okay ignorance means not knowing what is right and wrong or it could be in our rebellion that we can actually resist the work of the holy spirit right we can block the work of the holy spirit right so the holy spirit can be resisted so and so we see here stephen um uh, reprimanding the uh, the the people who had gathered there that you know you resist the holy spirit the second thing that we they are the, uh, one more thing that we see is that the holy spirit can be quenched what does quench mean what does this word quench mean holy spirit can be quenched what does that mean sorry thirst um actually it's used in relation to thirst in the sense i want to quench my thirst so i drink some water i'm feeling thirsty and i want to quench my thirst what does that mean that means that to put out this sensation of thirst so there therefore i drink some liquid to quench my thirst so quench actually means to put out right to it, it you can say you know so suppose there's a fire and you want to put off that fire put out that fire we we take a bucket of water and throw and then throw on it and the what the fire is put out right so the fire is quenched so the holy spirit can be quenched okay and we see that 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 19 um says do not quench the holy spirit 5 verse 19 do not quench the spirit so it means don't you know you you have the ability to choose and not choose you have the ability to obey and not obey when the holy spirit is moving and wanting to do something in your life do not quench the spirit because of your choice or because of your disobedience do not quench the work of the holy spirit or do not quench the spirit so which means that you know all these why are we studying all these things all these attributes because to just to understand that the holy spirit is a person okay so now that how does that understanding change our relationship with god okay how does this knowing that holy spirit is a person okay does it change anything in me or in my relationship with god what do you think or is it, or is it just information okay, sometimes we open the newspaper and we read okay the weather in this place is like this in himachal there was rain we close the newspaper and then we go on with our lives okay is it like that we open the bible okay holy spirit is a person you know we quench i should you know don't quench the holy spirit okay i just go about it so does anything change in us because of our understanding that the holy spirit is a person what do you think does anything change should anything change uh pastor yes uh, yeah. we we know then uh, god's uh, nature and character and god is holy and scripture says that we have to be holy like uh, god so this will help us to in increase our understanding of who god is yeah uh, so the thing is uh, see we understood that yeah i i get what you're saying like the holy spirit you know he is holy so therefore we must be holy now what specifically about the holy spirit being a person you know we've been studying that so mm -hmm. in our understanding of the holy spirit as a person now that we understood okay he speaks he communicates he has a will he can be grieved so in what way does that change us or does it really change us should it change us our relationship yes. with god yeah in what yes. way that's the question right okay mm -hmm. uh, 
Okay, so here's Charles' um, response. It says, it helps to be more sensitive in our relationship with him. Yeah, I think that's a good response. So for us, you know, just imagine this, okay? So you, let's say you're uh, invited for, uh, let's say, a birthday dinner or something. Okay? Your friend's dinner, birthday dinner, they're invited. They, you, they said, okay, uh, tomorrow is Friday. So after you finish your Bible classes or whatever, you know, come there okay, uh, for lunch. Okay, Two o'clock, be there. Okay. So now you go there and, uh, you know, they're all doing their own thing. Okay, your friend is there. Uh, so nobody's, uh, you know, some people are there. They're just talking among themselves. They're doing their thing. And you go there and uh, nobody acknowledges you. Right? You go to the house. Everything is there. The food is there. You know, the cake is there. But they're all doing their own thing. And you go and wish your friend, you know, happy birthday. And he, and he, he just, you know, ignores you and just keeps going. So how will you feel? You'll, you'll be like, you know, why did I come here? Right? Why did I come to this place? Yeah, I know I was invited, but why did I even come here? Right? There's nobody talking to me. There's nobody, you know, there's nobody coming, you know, interacting with me. And I'm here doing my own thing. The food is there. And, uh, you know, it's as if I can just go eat and then just get back. Right? Sometimes it happens, right? certain get-togethers, maybe you're invited for a wedding, nobody's even there to say hello, and you go, something is happening there, and then you go back, okay? So why are we, why are we, why are we you know, even talking about this? Because the fact is that the Holy Spirit is a person he wants to talk. Holy Spirit is a person, he has a will, and he, he wants to give some instructions, and he wants to share his thoughts. So me, as a, as a believer, we as believers in the Lord, our response to God should be to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Right? To talk, to spend time, to hear, and to listen, and to hear His heart. And to actually receive from His wisdom and understanding and everything, and say, Lord, what... What do you think about this? So, to commune with the Holy Spirit, to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Right? And if there is something that is grieving his heart, we know that the Holy Spirit will make it known in our spirit because he indwells us. And we feel the emotion of grief that the Holy Spirit feels. Right? So, Holy Spirit is disturbed. He's provoked. We feel that emotion. And, uh, and so, all that we need to do, are we are invited to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Right? To walk with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, this, so this understanding of the Holy Spirit being a person should change our prayer life, should change our you know, perspective of God. That we don't just... Talk to God, maybe at a, you know, like a corporate gathering, say, this is prayer time, now I will pray. No, we continue to commune with God, fellowship with God. We continue to talk to Him, tell Him our joy, tell Him our sorrows, tell Him our challenges, receive from Him when it comes to solving certain challenges, solving problems, you know, just involve, be involved in, uh, in, in the Holy Spirit. Like because he is involved in our lives. Okay? So uh, why don't we just close our eyes and just talk to God. Talk to the Holy Spirit. You speak in your own words, in your own language. Right? And say, Spirit of God, speak to me. Right? I want to talk to you. And you can tell him. Right? If there's, maybe you're feeling fear, just tell the Lord. Maybe if you're feeling sad about something, just open your heart to him. He understands. Maybe you feel that you're struggling in something, just tell the Lord. Because the, our God, the Holy Spirit, is a person. Right? 
and we there is so much more to who the Holy Spirit is. We we, we saw that He is a teacher, and He's the one who reminds us. So he's a teacher. He leads us into all truth. So we can say, come Holy Spirit, have your way in my life. Come Holy Spirit, I want to know you more. I want to spend time in your presence. Come Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord, we, we just invite you, Lord, at this time. Lord, you have the right of way in our lives. Lord, we pray that you will enable us to know you more. And I pray that every day, O oh God, that you will enable us to, to spend time in your presence, just talking to you, and listening to your voice, just involving you in all areas of our lives, God. And can we tell the Lord that, Lord, we, I, we just want to involve you in all areas of our life, open up our hearts in all areas, all aspects of our lives. Come, Lord, have your way. Have your way, God. If there's anything to do with my thoughts, anything to do with my words, anything to do with my lifestyle, my action, God, everything, Lord. just want to involve you. I want to walk with you. I want to please you. I don't want to grieve you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, you know, um, every day, we have the privilege of having God with us. Right? We have this privilege. We don't have to go to a physical place in order to you know, seek God. We have Him indwelling us. So all we have to do is just call upon Him. You want to switch on the fan, you can. Yeah. Um, so we have God you know, indwelling us and revealing things to us and teaching us and so and that's why you know he wants to be known as the helper he wants to be known as the comforter you know that's who he is so many times we you don't really draw from his help or draw from his comfort right? draw from the wisdom so we can do others so we're going to look at uh, you know some aspects of the holy spirit like what did the holy spirit do in the old testament Okay. So we're going to go through some of these Old Testament scriptures, actually a lot of Old Testament scriptures. So if you have your Bible, um, just open it up. As we look at these references, you know, you look it, read it in your own Bibles, right? So uh, we're going to go through some of the Old uh, uh, Testament uh, scriptures right from Genesis. We're going to see what did the Holy Spirit do? Okay, so then we get an understanding, oh, he did this in the Old Testament. So he's capable of doing this. You know, just like how we learned, okay, this is what the Holy Spirit is as a person. You know, he speaks and he knows and he has intelligence and all that. So just like that, when we look at the work of the Holy Spirit, we see that, oh, he's capable of doing this. And if he did it then, in the Old Testament times, we know that he is a God who does not change. And so he can do it now here in the present right okay so let's look at uh, you know the, the, the first um, uh, scripture reference genesis chapter 1 and verse 2 we see that the spirit of god is brooding, brooding over the uh, waters right that is what we see um, the earth was without form and void darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of god was hovering over the face of the waters right so it's brooding uh, and the word used there uh, hovering, uh, which means that just like how uh, 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 a bird, like a hen, mother hen, would actually brood over the eggs in order to hatch the eggs. Okay, so that's the that's the meaning 
of that uh, of that hovering okay that we see here that the holy spirit was hovering over the face of the waters and that word is used in the hebrew language to to describe a mother bird or a mother hen which is you know hovering or uh, sitting on the eggs in order to hatch it so we see that you know uh, right after that we see verse 3 god said let there be light and there was light so it's as if the holy spirit was you know hovering there we know he's omnipotent all powerful he's even birthing certain things you know giving birth to creation itself right? so we see that happening so uh, you know we can invite the holy spirit to give birth to the purposes of god right to bring about the purposes of god in our day and time in our cities in our nation lord let the purposes of god you know okay here genesis 2, 1 we see creation you know that was the intent that was the purpose and the holy spirit was brooding you now we can invite the holy spirit and say lord uh, let your let the purposes let the plans for the city for the nation you know for this thing let it for my life you know let it be birth let it be brought into reality right let the things be created so we see the holy spirit birthing uh, you know brooding okay then um, we when we go through we're just going to quickly go through certain scriptures right we see that the holy spirit um, let's move on to genesis 41 okay so genesis 41 verse 38 maybe somebody can read Okay, what do we see there? Genesis 41. Okay. Yeah, you can read. So may Genesis I? 41, verse 38. So, so may I read? So may yeah. I read? Yeah, you can, uh, Pankaj. I, only thing is, it's, it's a little muddy here, your voice. Oh. It's not very clear. So that's the thing. But go ahead, please read. <laughs> Genesis chapter 41, verse 38. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Okay. okay let me just read that again. Then Pharaoh said to the, uh, sorry, and then Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? And why did he say that? Why did he testify? Because here, Joseph, he had actually, um, uh, you know, he had, about the dream he had shared he had given the interpretation of the dream and so uh, the pharaoh was very very impressed and uh, it was about the the seven years of famine and the seven years of plenty so here's joseph interpreting the pharaoh's dream and also giving a strategy for the nation and so the pharaoh testifies and he says you know can we find such a person in whom is the spirit of God? So Joseph himself, you know, he he says that interpretation comes from God. It is not from man. This this whole what is interpretation? Uh, uh, you know, um, the meaning of the dream, right? What the dream means and what uh, the communication of that dream. So the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is the one who brought about the interpretation. Okay, so that's something that we understand. Okay, so um, sometimes we have dreams and God is speaking to us in those dreams. God speaks to us. Can God speak in dreams? What do you think? Yes or no? Okay, so we know that God can. But does God speak in dreams now? In these days? What do you think? He spoke then, right? Joseph... And even Joseph and Mary spoke in dreams. But can, does God speak in dreams today? Yes? Yeah. He's the same God. right? If he wants to, if he chooses to, he can communicate certain things in dreams. And he can do that because when we are awake, maybe we are not listening. He's saying, hey, you know, I want to tell you something and we are looking elsewhere. But in the, when, you are, when you are sleeping, you are you know, you're completely there, resting. And uh, you don't have a choice. The dream comes to you. Right? But then, 
we don't know what the dream means. Sometimes you're there, walking in the field, looking at the sun, and someone comes and tells you, you know, go into that house. All this happens, right, in a dream. And some of these things are literal, literal meaning. You know, it is, it, it is how it is. Maybe you saw the Bible college in a dream. I don't know how many of you had that experience. You know, you were at home and you had a dream. Okay, I'm going to this place. And you came here and you saw that, hey, this is exactly how I had, you know, how I had the dream. Right? So it's a literal dream. You saw the steps, you saw the building, and you came and, and you're saying, oh, this is, this is exactly how it was in my dream. So it's a literal dream. Right? But a dream can, can be symbolic in the sense, you know, maybe the dream was about you going back to school. Right? And you, rem you remind yourself, okay, this is, you know, you're going back to school and you're sitting at your desk and somebody dressed in a blue shirt comes and teaches you. <laughs> right? And you see that blue, blue shirt and it's a symbolic dream. You know, it's like going back to school and you know, I've already finished schooling. Why should I get back to school? And what does this blue shirt mean? And then so suddenly you realize, hey, it's a symbolic dream. What is the symbol? The fact that God wants to teach me, equip me, and it's a formal setting, like a school. And the blue shirt is someone who's probably teaching in that school that God is using. For example, okay. So, that is the interpretation that the Holy Spirit would give. Right? So, it's a symbolic dream. So, here, Joseph saw that. Joseph saw the dream and he saw that, um, yeah, seven years, seven thin cows eating up the seven healthy cows coming out of the river. And then he saw the seven years of corn, which are, you know, which were actually swallowing up the consuming the seven healthy corns. And so, you know, for for a person, normal person, it will be like, okay, what is that strange dream? Right? It's a very strange dream. Right? Animals eating animals. How can cows, you know, cows are supposed to eat the corns. They are eating each other. Right? It seems like a strange thing. But then, so the pharaoh was very disturbed, right? I saw this. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know the dream, uh, the interpretation of the dream, etc. So, so the people... You know, the magicians and everyone, they could not interpret it. They could not give the meaning of it with conviction, with confidence, except Joseph. Now, who gave Joseph that interpretation? The Holy Spirit. Right? So that wisdom, because he is omniscient, all-knowing, and that information, because he is the one actually who spoke to the Pharaoh. God is the one who spoke to the Pharaoh, even though Pharaoh did not know God. And God is the one who gave the interpretation, the meaning of that dream to Joseph. So we see that the Holy Spirit is the one who brought about that interpretation. Okay, so we see um, God speaks through his son, Jesus Christ. Gertrude, yes, very valid. God speaks through the word. God speaks through, uh, you know, uh, in so many ways. Have so many avenues, but we also see that God does speak uh, to us in dreams. He will always confirm it from the word, right? The standard of, of, of God's values and standards and holiness and so on. Uh, it will always, the word of God will not contradict. If, if there is a contradiction, then we know that the source of the dream is not God, right? Okay. Okay, so then let's move on. Let's move on to Exodus, right? Uh, very interesting, Exodus 28. Okay. Exodus 28. And uh, we see God's giving certain instructions to uh, those people. Okay, let's look at Exodus 28 and verse 3. Okay? So he's, uh, here's God who's giving instructions uh, to Moses. And this is what we read. Okay. Exodus 28, verse 3. Okay. So you shall speak to all who are gifted artisans, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments.
to consecrate him that he may minister to me as priest. Okay, let's look at one more verse. Let's move on to chapter 31 and uh, let's look at verses 2 to 5, right? Chapter 31, verse 2. Okay, and um, okay, so the Lord, uh, let's read from verse 1. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works, to work in gold and silver and bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. Okay? So we see something here, that the Holy Spirit is not just interpreting dreams, is not just the God of creation, but we see the Holy Spirit is a creative person who's giving creative ability to another human being. Right? What is what what ability does he give? You know, in 28, we see that he's filling that person or the gifted artisans. Who are gifted artisans? It means people who are skilled at creative work, like maybe pottery, maybe maybe painting. Right? Maybe jewelry, making jewelry, S several other things. Right? Maybe carpentry, they, they are good at carving. Now he says here that in that time, God saying that I have filled with the spirit of wisdom that they may make even Aaron's garments, like maybe fabric and you know, maybe uh, you know, some designing of fabric and so on. And in verse, sorry, chapter 31. Specifically, we read about this person by name. What is the person's name there? Huh? In chapter 31, what is the name of the person? Bezalel. Bezalel. Okay. Is everybody looking at your Bible? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Is Bezalel there? Hindi mein kya likha hai? 31, chapter 31, verse 3. What is the name of the person? Chapter 31, verse 3. Exodus chapter 31. Huh? Mm -hmm. So, unka naam kya? Oh, admi hai na? Unka naam. Uh, verse 2, uh? okay. Verse 2. Bazalel, okay. So in Hindi, it's, it's, it's name uh, is mentioned as Bazalel, okay. So Bazalel in English, right? So we see that God is filling this person with the Holy Spirit. And for what? Is he giving ability to preach, evangelize? Okay. So you both of you, what's your name? Um, behind uh, the person behind you, yeah. Your, your name, Nagaland from Nagaland. What's your name? Yeah, uh, Nonsang, right? Nonsang, okay. Now, person next to Nonsang, what is your name? Sorry, okay, okay. So, what did the Holy Spirit give? What kind of ability did the Holy Spirit give Bezalel? What did the Holy Spirit, what ability did he give Bezalel? Was it to preach? Was it to teach? Okay, wisdom for what? Huh? Artistic design, right? So, so the Holy Spirit gave Bezalel the ability for artistic design. So what is artistic design? Artistic design matlab kya hai? What is artistic design? Hmm. What? Yeah, anything that's creative, like you can 
maybe draw, paint, but here specifically he's talking about um, workmanship, uh, all manner of workmanship, right? To work in gold and silver and bronze with jewels, right? Um, so it's it's difficult work, right? Just think about it. Cutting jewels, one cut, one wrong cut, that's all. You can't use it, right? And you have to cut it in a certain way so that the light hits that stone, precious stone or whatever, uh, and then the beauty of the stone is comes up, right? So who's giving that ability the Holy Spirit? So many times we, we don't think that way. Now we look at creative work and we think, okay, that person learned it. Right? But the Holy Spirit, who is all-knowing, the Holy Spirit, who is the creative, you know, you, you see, he was brooding over the waters, right now, then at creation. And God says, and everything comes into being. Trying God is involved, right? That's the power of the Holy Spirit. The Son is involved, Father is involved, and creation. And we look at some of the things that we see around. You see the coconut tree, you see the pattern, you know, when you look at it, very intricate. You look at yourself, right? You, you look at your hand, you look at your, uh, you know, the print in your hand. Look at your hand now, look at your palm. Okay, you see that design. Okay. No one else has that. So unique, right? No one else has that. The chances of another person having the same fingerprint is very, very remote. Very remote. Right? And that is why for Aadhaar card and everything, they took your, did they take? Fingerprint, then your retina, all that they checked, right? So, so creative, so unique, God has created us. Right? The Holy Spirit is very, very, he is creative. And he gives this creative ability to man for a purpose. Amazing. So that's again under, expands our understanding. Okay, maybe you have a talent. You know, he's giving that added ability to gifted people. Maybe you you think, okay, I have, I can draw, I can paint. Ask the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, just like you poured out your spirit with wisdom and understanding on Bizalel, so that he can do all these things, you give me the ability also. Give me the ability. Maybe you're working for a, you know, advertising, and you're supposed to come out with a concept, come out with a, you know, idea, and you know, it, or you could be a musician, you could be a creative a person who's creative and all that. Ask the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, you give me the ability, right? It's not only preaching and teaching, etc. The Holy Spirit will empower us in all these ways to express His beauty, right? So that people can be drawn to Him, give glory to Him. Okay, right, so we see that. Then uh, let's move on to Numbers chapter 11. Okay, we, uh, we have a lot to cover, so we just keep going in uh, Numbers chapter 11. Um, uh, Numbers chapter 11, and we see in verses 17 to 29. Okay, okay so Numbers 11, 17. Um, so the Spirit of God here, is, he does something very unique again. Um, let's read from verse 16. Okay. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather to me 70 men from the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people, and officers over them. Bring them to the tabernacle of meeting, that they may stand there with you. Okay. So Moses, there are these elders. Now they are actually in the wilderness. Uh, so Moses has this awesome responsibility of leading these people onto the promised land and um, so the lord says you you know now the people have grown uh, which means that they have problems 
they have to have some judgments right they have to meaning they have to have some solutions right um, so they they've grown into a mighty nation so they're always complaining you know this person has taken the, my place this i'm supposed to live here but this person has moved here you know all kinds of things so moses has to solve that for them okay so so god is saying we bring those people 70 elders 70 men of the elders of israel and verse 17 what does he say okay we are looking at numbers 11 verse 17 it says then i will come down and talk with you there i will take of the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them that they shall bear the burden of the people with you and you shall not bear it yourself alone okay we understood this okay so what is what is the lord doing here what is the lord doing here sharing the responsibility brother sharing the responsibility of moses yeah so he's um, so what does he do no moses has this huge huge responsibility of leading the people and as he's, we, as we read the verses before or the chapters before we uh, in uh, verses before in numbers 11 we see that they are a difficult people there are things to be addressed he has they come to him and ask you know what should we do he has to tell them and then there are many people like from right from sunrise to sunset he is doing this so the lord actually gives um, uh, the same ability of leadership right Moses is leading, he's a leader, and uh, with all his wisdom, with all the wisdom that God has given him, he's, he's supposed to you know, decide and choose and etc. on behalf of the people. Now the Lord is saying, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, okay? So, which means that he led, that call and anointing and everything came by the Holy Spirit. Now the Lord is saying, I will take the spirit that is upon you and put it upon who? Put it upon 70, 70 elders so that, so what happens when the 70 elders also, they will bear the burden, which means that they will also have the same kind of capacity to lead the people. Okay, so here is one man who is leading and here are 70 others who have received the same capacity or same ability and the same wisdom to lead the people. Okay, so what happens now? Moses' burden is lightened. No, that's what happens here. You shall, they shall bear the burden of the people with you. You know, have you tried carrying something on your own? Maybe there's a heavy table or something, and somebody sees you carrying, and then two other people come and say, Hey, let me carry it. Okay. So how did you feel? The burden became lighter, table became lighter, you felt a little more relieved, okay? And as you're going, you're talking and you're, you know, there's some fellowship happening. So it, it becomes easier, right? You're not using so much energy, it becomes easier. So the Lord is saying, you know, I know it's, it's burdensome, but I'm going to take that same spirit and put it upon all the 70 elders, okay? Okay, so we'll take a break and then we'll come back in 10 minutes. Thank you.